So good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a wonder to be here. Great to be here today with such an esteemed group of, um, I would say, friends and panelists. Um, let me maybe just start by setting context for what we want to talk about. Look, supply chain is the lifeblood of any, any economy, right? And India is um, perhaps the fastest growing large economies in the world. Today. That said, our supply chain efficiency is not where it should be. All of your practitioners in the room, and I don't think this will fall on deaf ears. What's interesting is a bunch of things have happened in the last few years, which have set a good set a good foundation for us to become far more efficient. I think starting with GST, which made India one you know one integrated market, we are already seeing signs of people changing their network to make it more economically efficient, not just tax efficient. Then there are many other changes like the advent of BS6, so much better vehicles on the road. Um, you know, different partners have become much, much more digitally aware. The penetration of mobile phones is much higher. Today, any driver, any, you know, train conductor, anybody in any warehouse is fully connected, right? So we can use all of that. So there are many changes that are happening. You know, the payments have become so much more digital and integrated. Now to deliver benefits from all of this, it's important to be able to integrate all the partners in the supply chain. And look, supply chains are vast and have many, many, you know, partners that have to come together, right? Right from, you know, raw material suppliers to tier two, tier one, vendors to manufacturers, to service providers, to logistics companies, to warehouse companies, all the way up to the end consumer. And in India, we also have very large amount of our economy driven by MSMEs as we all know, right? So the fragmentation of the number of partners that have to come together to make supply chain efficient is quite large. I would argue much larger than many other large economies. Right now, in this context, we want to talk as a panel about what's the role of uh, telematics and IoT. Um, what I'm going to do is maybe spend about 20, 25 minutes talking to the panelists about two or three topics. One is a quick demystification of what is telematics and IoT and what kind of data does it allow us to capture. Two is what use can this data actually be? And look, maybe we are not recognizing and realizing all of it today. But what's the art of the possible and how does it add value to participants? And third is talk a little bit about the challenges of now doing this at scale to really drive India's supply chains into a very different level of efficiency and effectiveness. So maybe I'll start by calling on Bharat, right, to talk a little bit about, you know, what when we say telematics, when we say IoT, uh, what does it actually mean? And how does it allow us to actually just get a lot more data, which allows supply chains to be more informed yeah thanks thanks Vikram uh, when we talk about telematics IOT data so so we can always look at at three levels right one is obviously data which is coming from the asset itself whichever is the asset asset maybe an asset and the cargo both right so whether it is a cargo data or it is asset data is one set of data points which is coming and I'll detail out what what I talk or what I mean by the data Second is obviously the data which is the data which is getting done, uh, generated in the chain itself as a transaction data, right? Which which happens throughout the supply chain when the goods are being moved from one place to other, right? And the third data point which is which is also there on third layer, which is the finance and the insurance and all of this data point which is there on the third layer, right? So there are three data points which we are talking about, and and if you if you go deeper in asset layer, there are there are two data points there also or multiple data points rather. One is the data, which is location data, which is very simple, which is very, which is ubiquitous. Everywhere is there. And so one data point, which is very general is location data point, which lat long, which, 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 which you generally call it, right? Second data point, which is important, which is data, which is coming from the cargo track itself. So the asset track, cargo track, both are there. The third data point, which is coming is the data coming from the asset itself, which is how the asset is being used. Like 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 data coming from the can, which is the the sensors on the vehicle, uh, the engine data, the OBD data, and beyond that also there are data points which are coming from uh, the other pieces on the vehicle itself, right? Where where which 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 will have uh, different connotations, right? So th these data points are something which which uh, are combination of geo location, the telematics, and and then 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 we talk about IoT. Uh, the sensor data, performance data, all of these data points are something which which is gets generated. Now the question is how 
how does the data help we'll discuss that in we'll come to that yes. in a minute so maybe so, ankur given that your firm also integrates supply chain partners right and enables those transactions can you tell the group a little bit about what kind of data are we talking about and what enables it yeah so uh, thanks again uh, so data which uh, we capture are for the uh, as just mentioned uh, from like the we capture the coordinates and uh, the speed and time is the basic uh, basic thing which you capture through gps but on top of that we try to provide uh, to the both the fleet owners as well as to the shippers that uh, how they can increase the utilization of the vehicle and if the ship for the shippers how they can basically uh, move their uh, shipment faster so we provide them the lots of analytics that uh, what was the past trend how much the vehicle utilization for the for the particular location was the route performance and all those thing so on the basis of that they basically able to increase the utilization for those uh, as a ship as well as transporters yeah so maybe i'll add to that I mean, bharat i think when you're talking about the transaction layer i think simply it's just easy to think of it as right from somebody placing an indent to the order being raised to goods being allocated against the order uh, to a truck being assigned or a vehicle being assigned you know to the warehouse being told where to pick up the goods from these are all transactions right that need to actually happen and all this actually provides you a lot of information which i think the second level of data that uh, i was talking about and and look on top of this there is also a financial services layer i want to quickly get to the next uh, point about really what you do with all of this but there are a lot of financial services that go along the supply chain right about trip financing insurance and so on and so forth that to me is the third level of uh, of data but now moving on from data maybe i you know call on uh, amit uh, it will be interesting to talk a little bit about what is the art of possible when we have all this data around the entire supply chain now i know we are not there yet but if we imagine a future when we have all this information all this data available right end to end in the supply chain what kind of value can it really unlock okay uh thanks vikram so so the value that can be unlocked here will depend on where you are in the supply chain okay there are multiple layers in the supply chain if you will uh for instance when you're talking about manufacturers and their tier ones and the tier two right so that's one part of the supply chain then you've got manufacturing to retailers that's another part of the supply chain and then you've got the logistics supply chain where where you have the transportation optimization and management right and finally you have the consumer side so there are there are these value based on what part of the supply chain you are also within that whether you are on the first leg which is the the first mile versus the second mile which is the transportation logistics and the third mile so the different sets you know and that is where it is you know it could for for instance it could be for when you're talking about the uh, uh the data that that these two guys are talking about getting captured it's the it's it's what drives the value for each individual person or or logistics you know for me it may not be location let's say i have a fleet of 10 right for me it could be the savings on the operating cost right for me it could be the bill fridge can that data provide that or not that's the value right it could also be i am a i am a i am a i am a fleet of 100 trucks and i am waiting to unload my goods can i get information ahead in advance what time i have to reach so that i can schedule it that's a kind of information so there are different information sets you know that you need so i i uh, agree with what the other panelists have also said so telematics in essence is uh, it starts from the fact that we need to capture data which otherwise is not available and then the next level will be to have a connectivity solution to be able to relay that data to a central database then finally we will talk about the database based solutions how to integrate various data and then decision making on top of that uh, but i think one of the things i want to add is that uh, we should not uh, we end up mostly talking about uh, all these solutions for the large logistics problem which is for example trucking or railways or ports etc but we should also not miss out the first mile and last mile so for example a small manufacturer or a farmer when they are bringing in their goods there is a lot of inefficiency in that system when the logistics is happening or when we take the last mile distribution uh, from the warehouse it's distributed via small commercial vehicles or in india even on cycles and so on 
and the large distribution companies have made a big virtue of that. But there are inefficiencies in these systems as well, and there is possibility of bringing in solutions, telematic-based solutions, which could even be enabled through your mobile phone. You don't necessarily need a separate device. Could you folks maybe maybe explain what you mean through an example for the audience, like um, like perhaps the story you were telling me just before this, right, about how the PDS system got. Um, yeah, so this is a very interesting story, uh, I, uh, uh, which the UP government uh, first initiated, and I believe a lot of private enterprises and other state governments are trying to replicate, which is on the public distribution system, distribution of rations. Uh, we have traditionally heard there is a lot of pilferage and mixing and so on. So uh, 10 tons of goods would reach, uh, leave uh, the warehouse, which the government is paid for, and only 5 tons or even 2, 3 tons is given out to the beneficiaries and everything else is uh, stolen away. So what the government did was they had a focus for, on three elements. First, they said tracking. I want a tracker, GPS tracker on every vehicle which leaves. Two, a central dashboard where you know the, all the vehicles are monitored uh, and somebody is monitoring them 24-7 to see if a truck is stopped for more than their designated time slot, then they get an immediate call saying what happened. And the third is just before the vehicle is supposed to arrive, the beneficiaries in that location get an SMS alert saying your goods are, are going to arrive. Please come and collect them between so and so uh, time slot. Uh, and finally, everybody has been now issued. Uh, I, I don't know if people know, but the new ration card is cheap. So you can't double take uh, and so on. Uh, right. So uh, the combination of these things have ensured that 100% uh, distribution or almost 100% distribution of what uh, benefits the government was sending out is reaching the end consumer. So, you know, I find a very interesting point that comes out of what you just said. All the data sources that you're talking about are not really complex. They're not like OBD and CANPOT, right. right? But this is an instance where somebody has managed to stitch them all together to really then extract the right value, which in this instance Absolutely. is preventing leakages in all the handovers, right? It would be interesting uh, to, to hear from your examples, right? Um, as you serve supply chain participants. Are there other such stories? What are the kind of improvements that you're seeing companies realize? Uh, uh, yes. So just to take one more, one example. So two years back, we had a meeting with one of the top cement manufacturers in India. So they had the issues that uh, they are bringing the coal from uh, ports and the mines and the coal, the, the ports, the coal which they're bringing are for the Indonesian, US and Canadian coal. So they are facing the issues that for the inbound uh, uh, tracking during the shipment, the coal and the coal theft and pilferage are there. They ever do this because the coal and uh, basically transport due to the open body truck. So they just leave the tarpaulin, taking out the conventional seals and uh, taking the material, taking the coal back to the uh, plants. And the uh, security guards just check the seals are there or not, the manual, the plastic seals are there. So they are saying that uh, close to 100 years of loss they are having in the financial year. So they, uh, we approached to them and we proposed a solution that we would like to pro uh, provide you the telematics GPS based tracking solution, where for each and every trip, we just uh, give you the risk level, risk level as a high, medium and the low risk. We, uh, we just uh, set the parameters that these are the lead distance, lead time and the route. So if any deviation in the lead time, lead, uh, lead distance and the route, we generate some scores in the back end. And once the truck reaches at the plant location, in the real time, we just trigger the alerts to the security and the logistics person that this truck has this so much, uh, this so, so, so certain deviations, and this truck falls into the high risk. So one solution is that. And the parallelly, we propose them the one more solution, innovative solution, which is the digital sealing solution, which is the RFID and the barcode seals. Because every seal, uh, this RFID and barcode seals are a unique number. So the driver cannot duplicate the seals during the in transit. They cannot, if they want to lift the tarpaulin, they need to cut the seals. So with that, we are able to reduce the theft and privileges for more than 90-95%. And right now, we are providing 50,000 coal movement for Pan India for cement steel giants in India. Uh, Vikram, there are two points where we, as I was discussing, right? One is information is there, but what are, what are we solving for? And for many customers, like for our customers, there, there are two levels of uh, inefficiency which uh, we talked about, right? One is your... Asset inefficiency or asset utilization or asset uh, e efficiency, and the second is chain efficiency, which which uh, we was talking about. Now both have use cases, and what we have looked at as 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 an OEM, we have been able to solve both, right? And give you give you perspective. Uh, fuel is the largest contributor of uh, in their operating cost of any transporter, right? Whether it is any any of the modes we talk about, right? 
and and in that case with telematics data and now we say telematics telematics data itself is one piece but apart from that the, the, the data on driving behavior data on engine parameters and vehicle parameters and we we did uh, our algorithms which were able to reduce or improve uh, fuel consumption or fuel efficiency of the vehicle in the range 5 to 15 percent which is huge right depending on what is starting position of the transporter so one particular transporter was able to improve it by 15 percent which is huge so it the, the the important part is what are what are the use cases we are looking at use cases can be combination of different parameters cannot be one silo silo data. and that's where the challenge is that's where the efficiency of this entire chain is that how do we bring the data together that the insight and hence call to action is given this is this is good this, this is what we are doing and this is what i think will help both asset and chain efficiency so there can be many use cases that are about leakage about value creation for every participant yes yes but the issue is really not just about having the data but what do you then do with it and it could also be bringing multiple sources of data together to actually generate the right insight and right action yes people to create that correct so good so with that let's move to the uh next to the third question and then i'll open it up for questions from the audience look many of the technologies we're talking about have been around for ages right the gps has been around for ages i know 10 years ago my clients used to think about that like GPS, mobile phones are ubiquitous. You know, I would argue Bharat, even though BS6 is still only three years old, it is three years old, right? So there has been a fair amount of data that the truck already has been generating for a while. Um, ERPs have been around for a long time. Why haven't we seen the required benefits, all these use cases that we are talking about? Why have we not been able to really see these value, the value actually accrue to participants? What's the issue and what can we do to solve it? So this is my favorite part actually, okay. Uh, so, so yeah, we've talked about a lot of telematic stuff, you know, and we've got data and then we do uh, provide efficiency based on the value and stuff like that. But I think that's not the problem. I think uh, the, the whole supply chain and the and the logistics sector, for instance, right? It, it it's a small part of the bigger supply chain, right? Is 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 disorganized, right? And it's not, you know, what data you collect. It also calls for education of the logistics guy. There has to be, and and when you're talking about, you know, the the the, the pickup and the drop, right? It's generally for big guys, and they are looking at a different data attribute set of data. Which is which is what is part of the supply chain, that needs to be brought in through the logistics and the telematics as well, so that it's a standard set of attributes uh, that follows through. Again, remember, most of these guys have integrated their solutions with the ERP system, so we need to tie the data to the ERP system. That that's where it is. There are there are a lot, you know. So, so if you look at the seventy percent of the the logistics sector, and again, you know, logistics is one part. There is the 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 we talked about the first mile, the last mile, the train, right? Everything has to be brought in together from a data perspective, and that is not there. I think it's time we go to a data-driven supply chain, which which is not happening there. Is right. where it should. But Bharat, let me ask you one question. You know, you know, Tata Motors obviously has fleet edge, which I'm, I'm many of us are aware of. But you've had a fleet solution for a while. What is the uptake actually been? And why has it been, you know, not as much as you would like it to be? What is, what do you think the challenges are? There are two challenges, right? One is, uh, yes, uh, the use cases have to start making sense to customers, right? And the, the chain users, right? And the use cases have, and, and the use cases which were there earlier were very discrete or very siloed, right? Now that with a with lot of integration happening, we are seeing uh, multiple use cases coming together to build a larger use case now, right? So that this has been one of the challenges, right? And the second challenge has been the willingness to pay in, in, in the customers because as since they are not seeing the value, they are not willing to pay for that, right? And hence, what as an OEM, what we are looking at, like so for BS6, our uptake is almost 100%. All the vehicles are coming with telematics unit, right? So now we are seeing a two-way push and pull both, right? Customers and the chain itself is asking for now uh, the, the, the solution where, because they're seeing benefit and there is, there, is a, there is a use case for all stakeholders in the chain. 
Second is OEMs are also pushing it because OEMs are also going to benefit from that data which is coming from the vehicle because that helps design vehicle better, understand customer better, and hence improve the the allocated solutions which goes to customer. So this 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 the push going to come from uh, both uh, OEMs and also from the chain uh, stakeholders. But it has not it was not there because the solutions were use cases were very discreet, very basic, which which was not the making sense to customer. Now the use cases are making a lot, lot more sense, and hence going forward, we'll see a higher uptake, maybe more than 50, 60 percent at least. Uh, as of now, it is it, the entire park connected vehicle would be 7 to 8 percent as of now, which we I think in the next five years, we should be able to see anything between 50 to 60 percent being there. That's how it will move. So you're saying the ability to actually take that data and generate enough value. Insight and a call to action, yes. And with the right call to action is what will actually spur demand and and then spur uptake, right? Yes, please go ahead. So you're absolutely right. So we have a use case where uh, 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 based on the, this was OBD based data, okay? And we were able to not only get the driving behavior, but also the fuel consumption. And the and the trending on the fuel consumption by the routes, okay? and also we use that using ML machine learning to predict the maintenance as well. So there was a predictive calendar that was published on a real time basis. It was ab adopted by the by the the company, and and looking at what the target KMP is going to be for the routes, what the target driver behavior is going to be, everything was put in place taking that whole thing and converting into a training program for the drivers, we were able to save almost like $6 million in about two years time. And that's a huge savings. Okay? Right. And that's a good optimization from a fleet perspective, okay? logistics perspective. But again, it's the inefficiency on the either side, which also leads to a lot. But can I now be a bit provocative? Look, both your examples, while good, and I resonate with the idea of value and then having people to pay, you know, are examples where I'm taking, so there is my asset, you're taking my data, and you're using it to make my asset more efficient, right? I'd argue this perhaps is happening quite a lot anyway, right? Bigger companies are anyway trying to invest time and effort in trying to improve their own efficiencies. When we talk about the supply chain, it's also about your data, you know, helping me improve my operation, right? Why isn't that happening? And what, does, what needs to happen to fix that? To, to answer that, you have to have the integration done on both the sides of the supply chain, okay, which is mi missing today. There is the, 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 the whole idea of sharing data across walls is not happening today, which is where the problem is. If you look at that, if I'm a fleet guy and I have a manufacturing and this is what my supply is going to be. I'm not marrying it to the demand of me as a supply, as a fleet guy, which is missing, which is where the delinquency or the delay is happening. Same thing on the delivery side as well. If I know what the demand is there and what I'm going to supply, is that getting married or not from a data perspective? And that's why I said the first layer is the data layer, which needs to be built in. I have a simplistic view of this. I don't think we have an agreement on... Uh, what is the end benefit we are offering? Or what is the problem uh, we are trying to solve? Like the example I gave, the end benefit was very clear. Problem we are trying to solve is very clear, very simple, and therefore the benefits are there for everyone. Right? Uh, now, here we get caught in too many layers. So much data, everybody, so the OEM, the manufacturer has different kinds of data, the logistics provider has different data, the shipper has different data, the designing has different data, and so on. It's just too cumbersome. Oh, what is that one problem we have to solve? It? Unless um, you know, everybody comes together in this entire supply chain play and say, this is my biggest problem I want to solve. And then we all target that to solve. It's not going to happen. Really. But then you're arguing that each supply chain part, each supply chain, so let's say I'm a large FMCG company, I will integrate the participants and try and put them all onto one platform where they transact. And that's a prerequisite for. So I, I have a, again a simplistic view. One word thing: cost. If I say supply chain is about cost, and right? And therefore, if I say I make cost more effective, I reduce cost. Hmm. Everybody would uh, 
benefit is the same, right? Right. And if that's a single uh, focus we all yeah. take, then not just cost. Cost, okay. In a supply chain, the key component is your supply chain visibility and the efficiency. Yes. Okay. Which is missing today. Okay. And and so for for and at the end, you know, it's the customer who is going to get benefit or not benefit, basically. And how do you manage your customer expectations? That is critical. Okay. So there, there is a push, and I'll tell you from, from my experience, you know, and this is not today, I'm talking about 20 years back, 25 years back, when we built supply chains, and I'm talking about actually our software, right? It was all collaborative in nature, which means if I'm a best buy, and if I'm pushing my demand and supply into a collaborative mode, I'm letting my logistics know. Doesn't matter whether it's gonna be a two truck fleet or it's gonna be a thousand truck fleet. They're all running off the same tool, basically. And which is what makes sense. Right. You have to bring everyone into one, uh, whether it's app based or something based. Just to add to that, uh, what uh, the last two, two sentences is, is that uh, the supply chain partners or uh, the players need to understand that unless until they come together, pie, pie doesn't get bigger, right? You can't fight for a smaller pie there because as of now, every stakeholder is fighting for his visibility and hence pie, whatever he's saving going to be the use case, which is similar to him. But we have to look at larger use cases, as you were saying, saying that logistics cost in as percent of GDP has to come down from 14 to 8%, like what uh, government has do, is doing on a ULIP, right? Creating a simple data uh, pipe. But the point is, all of us will have to understand that the pie gets bigger and you get a pie of that. Which is which is where a portion of that. This is where the benefit will come, and this is when the fourteen will become eight, right? Individually, we it, it can't come down. We'd have to collaborate and do that, and that's where what you were saying. What are you solving for cost? Then all cost elements have to come together and see how do we reduce that. What is a bit discouraging about this this view, which I understand is what has prevailed for a while, is that then you're literally saying that individual supply chains have to solve their own problems, right? How do we really get to solving the efficiency of India's supply chain? It's still eluding me. Look, because we are, it's almost looking like data is the public good. It has to be treated like a public good. Yes. Somebody has got to integrate all it and make it available right, to a bunch of participants. You can then use that data to drive a better decision making and so on. Is that, is that the conclusion we're reaching that somebody's got to solve this for us? Or is there a it will, private market solution for this? Market will find its place. It will happen. See, the, the, the there is a push from government. ULIP, I said, is, is a unifying platform where everybody will come together. They, they, it, it was a lacking, lacking piece in the entire puzzle. There, there has to be somebody who is integrating, which has a full view of end-to-end, -end, right? That's what is happening. So once that happens, then I think what you are saying, individual also gets solved and overall also gets solved. So I think the government is not going to solve. I think we should not wait for the government to solve our problems. Right. We have to solve ourselves. No? And it's going to be the private companies who's going to solve it. And there are few companies doing it. I'll tell you, Asian Paints is one of the companies. For 20 years back, we implemented supply chain for them. Okay, uh, Tata, uh, uh, Tata Steel is also another company which has which are implemented about 20 years back. So there are individuals coming up and doing it. But it's just that you know it's so disorganized. The newer players have to pull in and bring people together, you know, which is going to be, which is going to help the other uh, smaller players also be more efficient. Right. And if you reflect back on all the use cases we talked about, a lot of the real high value use cases tend to be about network efficiency, not individual asset efficiency, right? Which is why you need to really be able to bring all participants together. Different uh, point of view. See, if you look at the specific examples here, if finally a, each individual vehicle with better telematics and data utilization gives me better fuel efficiency and save money. Right. Right. Uh, as a fleet operator, if I have better visibility on my vehicles, better utilization, I save money. And so on. So I think each one of the benefits, individual benefits itself, if we layer on, can eventually lead to cost savings. Just Maybe we have about five minutes. Just to time. add one, Vikram, before that. See, we did one exercise, right, and estimate. Uh, just by bringing data together on one platform, right, on through the through the chain, a transporter can save almost seven to eight percent of his cost. We are not talking about fuel cost. We are talking about inefficiencies other than the in the, in the chain itself. 
that will bring down utilization and then insurance benefit and other benefits it can bring down by 7 to 8% right so the, as as you rightly said bottom up cases are building up and it will come together uh, either oem will bring it together or some platform will bring it together right but point is the moment everything comes together the scale what network effect we were talking about kicks in and that's where the, you will see a bigger benefit coming in right the right, other individual benefits which is there anyways in the system and perhaps there is a tipping point exactly where we go beyond just information being available to value to, being added exactly which is when you will see massive uptake yep interesting any concluding thoughts maybe we have a minute for each of you to anything on your mind that you feel is going to really change the way supply chain efficiency is driven by data yeah so so you know i think uh, 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 a couple of things i'll say okay one is you know my experience has been and i'm talking about big or small doesn't matter right the inefficiencies are huge if we do things correctly and make it more efficient you can save to the tune of 20 30 percentage points okay you know i as an individual if i have a small fleet i do efficiency and bring it to certain level but from from a from our actual efficiency improvement i may be way off it. what's in my thought may not be correct because i'm not using technology per se having said that i always believe it's it's when you want to do a transformation it's a four pillar transformation you have to look at the processes and not just you know at the ends of the supply chain but within supply chain there has to be a, a platform approach okay which means you know technology third is technology what tools are you going to use so supply chain collaboration is one transportation optimization you have to go down the tool route why because at the end of the day the fourth pillar is your data and data drives everything no matter how good your platform is technologies if you don't have data is garbage in garbage out right no matter how your good your data is and platform and technology but if you don't change the processes you're not going to change anything that is where we have to start looking no so like i said i think uh... what's important is uh, i i believe th- uh, two things are important Te- telematics uh, or uh, database solutions are of course uh, going to be very useful but we need to first figure out what is the common benefit we are all driving towards and two the applications have to be thought through across the chain not just limited to the large segments of the market for true benefit to uh, come out the inefficiencies in the smaller segments are much higher much higher uh because the larger segments already have some solutions on the other and they have uh, operation management tools and so on so uh, those are the two things i would really focus on any last thoughts yeah uh to be honest i am very optimistic about the gdp i have been uh, tra- transportation cost as gdp going coming down from 14 to 8 i'm definitely next 5 years we're going to see a huge amount of definite definite change happening there both because there is a bottom up top down both approaches are there and we are moving both on processes tools technology and the use case which we are going to see in next couple of next 3 to 5 years is is completely different than what we are looking at the, the, the art of imagination art of possible is right. is is there right and uh, just to give you perspective as an oem we are working on lot of use cases which are which are uh, across the chain not only within the vehicle or linking to asset only so yes i do i do see in next 5 years the changes are going to happen big time ankur any last thoughts so as a saas solution provider so in our case so the fleet owners with whom we are working so they are using the data and they are increasing their fleet of vehicle utilization either through the tpms trans either through the tire management or the fuel sensor or the iot sensors but in case of uh, enterprises or the manufacturers we are providing them the solution and configuring the complete uh, uh, integration with either they are using the sap or salesforce and providing them the centralized control dashboard where the different kpis is the, the real time kpis will be there and they are working on that to improve their uh, uh, increasing their efficiency and the compliances thanks a lot so i think we are almost on time so look it's been an interesting discussion I don't think we would have expected to come up with perfect answers the way it would have been solved by now. But what I'm taking away is, you know, data is now far more ubiquitous because with telematics and IoT and some of the more recent regulatory changes, there has been an explosion of data that's available. The challenge is really about how do you bring all that data together, keeping in mind data privacy as well. 
and make it available to supply chain participants. To the point you made, it's not just the large people, but also the small. That's level one of the problem. The level two of the problem is then really how do you build the capability? Either within participants, you can take that data and do something with it and create value for themselves. Or somebody does this for the smaller people. Right? So which is where perhaps platforms such as yours and yours come in. Right? Because you're solving this problem which will help smaller transporters, smaller shippers actually solve that. That's maybe the second level. Third level I would think is you also need to drive adoption and ensure that value is delivered to get the willingness, willingness to pay. I do believe one thing we've not talked a lot about is the design of the solution itself to make adoption easy. But maybe that's a subject for a separate conversation. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure here being here with all of you. I hope you took away some thoughts for the future. Thank you to all the panelists. Been and why has it been, you know, not as much as you would like it to be? What is, what do you think the challenges are? There are two challenges, right? One is uh, yes, uh, the use cases have to start making sense to customers, right, and the, the chain users, right, and the use cases have and and the use cases which were there earlier were very discrete or very siloed, right. Now that with a with lot of integration happening, we are seeing uh, multiple use cases coming together to build a larger use case now, right? So that this has been one of the challenges, right? And the second challenge has been the willingness to pay in, in, in the customers because as since they are not seeing the value, they are not willing to pay for that, right? And hence, what as an OEM, what we are looking at, like so for BSX, our uptake is almost 100%. All the vehicles are coming with telematics unit, right? So now we are seeing a two-way push and pull both, right? Customers and the chain itself is asking for now uh, the, the, the solution where, because they're seeing benefit and there is, there, is a, there is a use case for all stakeholders in the chain. Second is OEMs are also pushing it because OEMs are also going to benefit from that data which is coming from the vehicle because that helps design vehicle better, understand customer better, and hence prove the, the value solutions which goes to customer. So this 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 the push going to come from uh, both uh, OEMs and also from the chain uh, stakeholders, but it has not it was not there because the solutions were use cases were very discreet, very basic, which which was not uh, making sense to customer. Now the use cases are making lot lot more sense, and hence going forward we'll see a higher uptake, maybe more than 50, 60 percent at least. Uh, as of now, it is it, the entire park connected vehicle would be seven to eight percent as of now. Which we, I think, in the next five years, we should be able to see anything between 50 to 60 percent being there. That's how it will move. So, you're saying the ability to actually take that data and generate enough value insight and a call to action, yes, and with the right call to action is what will actually spur demand and, and then spur uptake, right? Yes, please go ahead. So, you're absolutely right. So, we have a use case where, uh, 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 based on the this was OBD based data, okay. And we were able to not only get the driving behavior, but also the fuel consumption and the and the trending on the fuel consumption by the routes. Okay. And also we use that using ML machine learning to predict the maintenance as well. So there was a predictive calendar that was published on a real-time basis. It was ab adopted by the by the, the company and and looking at what the target PMP is going to be for the routes what the target driver behavior is gonna be. Everything was put in place. Taking that whole thing and converting into a training program for the drivers, we were able to save almost like $6 million in about two years time. And that's a huge savings, okay? Right. And that's a good optimization from a fleet perspective, okay? Logistics perspective. But again, it's the inefficiency on the other side which also leads to a lot of But can I now be a bit provocative? Look, both your examples while good, and I resonate with the idea of value and then having people to pay, you know, are examples where I'm taking, so there is my asset, you're taking my data, and you're using it to make my asset more efficient, right? I'd argue this perhaps is happening quite a lot anyway, right? Bigger companies are any, anyway trying to invest time and effort in trying to improve their own efficiencies. When we talk about the supply chain, it's also about your data, you know, helping me improve my operation. Right? Why isn't that happening? And what does... What needs to happen to fix that at scale? To, to answer that, you have to have the integration done on both the sides of the supply chain, okay? Which is mi missing today. There is the, 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 
the whole idea of sharing data across walls is not happening today, which is where the problem is. If you look at that, if I'm a fleet guy and I have a manufacturing and this is what my supply is going to be, I'm not marrying it to the demand of me as a supply, as a fleet guy, which is missing, which is where the delinquency or the delay is happening. Same thing on the delivery side as well. If I know what the demand is there and what I'm going to supply, is that getting married or not from a data perspective? And that's why I said the first layer is the data layer, which needs to be built in. I have a simplistic view of this. I don't think we have an agreement on uh, what is the end benefit we are offering or what is the problem uh, we are trying to solve. Like the example I gave, the end benefit was very clear. The problem we are trying to solve is very clear, very simple, and therefore the benefits are there for everyone. Right? Uh, now, here we get caught in too many layers, so much data, everybody, so the OEM, the manufacturer has different types of data, the logistics provider has different data, the shipper has different data, the designing has different data, and so on. It's just too cumbersome. So what is that one problem we have to solve? It? Unless um, you know, everybody comes together in this entire supply chain play and say, this is my biggest problem I want to solve. And then we all target that to solve. It's not going to happen. Really. But then you're arguing that each supply chain part, each supply chain, so let's say I'm a large FMCG company, I would that's a prerequisite for so I, I have a again a simplistic view one word thing cost if I say supply chain is about cost and right and therefore if I say I make cost more effective I reduce cost mm. everybody would uh, benefit there, right? right and if that's a single uh, focus we all yeah. uh, take then not a spot cost okay in a supply chain the key component is your supply chain visibility and the efficiency yes. okay which is missing today okay and and so for for and at the end you know it's the customer who is going to get benefit or not benefit basically and how do you manage your customer expectations that is critical okay so there, there is a portion i'll tell you from from my experience you know and this is not today i'm talking about 20 years back 25 years back when we built supply chains and i'm talking about actually our software right it was all collaborative in nature which means if I'm a best buy, and if I'm pushing my demand and supply into a collaborative mode, I'm letting my logistics know. Doesn't matter whether it's gonna be a two truck fleet or it's gonna be a thousand truck fleet. They're all running off the same tool, basically. And which is what makes sense. Right. You have to bring everyone into one, uh, whether it's app-based or something. Just to add to that, uh, what uh, the last two, two sentences is, is that, uh, the supply chain partners or the players need to understand that unless until they come together, pie, pie doesn't get bigger, right? You can't fight for a smaller pie there because as of now, every stakeholder is fighting for his visibility and hence pie, whatever he's saving going to be, the use case which is similar to him. But we have to look at larger use cases as you were saying, saying that logistics cost in, as percent of GDP has to come down from 14 to 8%, like what uh, government has do, is doing on a ULIP, right? creating a simple data uh, pipe. But the point is, all of us will have to understand that the pie gets bigger and you get a pie of that, which is which is where a portion of that, this is where the benefit will come and this is when the 14 will become eight, right? Individually, we, we can't come down. We'd have to collaborate and do that. And that's where what you were saying, what are you solving for cost? Then all cost elements have to come together and see how do we reduce that. What is a bit discouraging about this, this view, which I understand, is what has prevailed for a while, is that then you're literally saying that individual supply chains have to solve their own problems, right? How do we really get to solving the efficiency of India's supply chain? It's still eluding me. Look, because we are, it, it's almost looking like data is the public good. It has to be treated like a public good. Yes. Somebody's got to integrate it and make it available, right? To a bunch of participants. You can then use that data to drive a better decision making and so on. Is that is that the conclusion we're reaching that somebody's going to solve this for us, or is there a it will, private market solution for this? Market will find its place. It will happen. See the, the the there is a push from government. ULIP, I said, is is the unifying platform where everybody will come together. The, the, it, it was a lacking lacking piece in the entire puzzle. There, there has to be somebody who is integrating, which has a full view of end to end. Right, that's what is happening. So once that happens, 
then I think what you are saying, individual also gets solved and overall also gets solved. So I think the government is not going to solve. I think we should not wait for the government to solve our problems. We have to solve ourselves. No? And it's going to be the private companies who's going to solve it. And there are few companies doing it. I'll tell you, Asian Paints is one of the companies. For 20 years back, we implemented supply chain for them. Okay. Uh, Tata, uh, uh, Tata Steel is also another company which has which had implemented about 20 years back. So there are individuals coming up and doing it. But it's just that, you know, it's so disorganized. The newer players have to pull in and bring people together, you know, which is going to be, which is going to help the other uh, smaller players also be more efficient. Right. And if you reflect back on all the use cases, we talked about a lot of the real high value use cases tend to be about network efficiency, not individual asset efficiency, right? Which is why you need to really be able to bring all participants together. Different uh, point of view. See, if you look at the specific examples here, if finally a, each individual vehicle with better telematics and data utilization gives me better fuel efficiency, I save money. Right. right? Uh, as a fleet operator, if I have better visibility on my vehicles, better utilization, I save money. And so on. So I think each one of the benefits, individual benefits itself, if we layer on, can eventually lead to Okay. Just we have about five minutes. Just to add one, Vikram, before that, see, we did one exercise, right, and estimate. Uh, just by bringing data together on one platform, right, on through the through the chain, a transporter can save almost seven to eight percent of his cost. We are not talking about real cost. We are talking about inefficiencies other than the in the, in the chain itself that will bring down utilization and then insurance benefit and other benefits it can bring down to 7 to 8 percent right so the as as you rightly said bottom up cases are building up and it will come together uh, either oem will bring it together or some platform will bring it together right but point is the moment everything comes together the scale what network effect we're talking about kicks in and that's where the, you will see a bigger benefit coming in, right? Rather right, right, individual benefits, which is there anyways in the system. And perhaps there is a tipping point. Exactly. Where we go beyond just information being available to value to, being added. Exactly. Which is when you will see massive uptake. Yep. Interesting. Any concluding thoughts? Maybe we have a minute for each of you to anything on your mind that you feel is going to really change the way supply chain efficiency is driven by data. Yeah, so, so you know, I think uh, 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 a couple of things I'll say. Okay? One is, you know, my experience has been, and I'm talking about big or small, it doesn't matter, right? The inefficiencies are huge. If you do things correctly and make it more efficient, you can save to the tune of 20, 30 percentage points. Okay? You know, I as an individual, if I have a small fleet, I do efficiency and bring it to a certain level. But from from a from our actual efficiency improvement, I may be way off. What's in my thought may not be correct because I'm not using technology per se. Having said that, I always believe it's, it's when you want to do a transformation, it's a four pillar transformation. You have to look at the processes and not just you know at the ends of the supply chain, but within supply chain. There has to be a, a platform approach, okay? Which means you know technology, third is technology. What tools are you gonna use? So supply chain collaboration is one, transportation optimization. You have to go down the tool route. Why? Because at the end of the day, the fourth pillar is your data. And data drives everything. No matter how good your platform is, technologies, if you don't have data, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? No matter how your, good your data is and platform and technology, but if you don't change the processes, you're not going to change anything. That is where we have to start looking. Right? No, so like I said, I think... Uh... What's important is, uh, I, I believe uh, two things are important. Tele telematics uh, or uh, database solutions are, of course, uh, going to be very useful. But we need to first figure out what is the common benefit we are all driving towards. And two, the applications have to be thought through across the chain, not just limited to the large segments of the market for true benefit to uh, come out. The inefficiencies in the smaller segments are much higher. Much higher. Uh, because the larger segments already have some solutions on the other and they have uh, operation management tools and so on. So uh, those are the two things I would really focus on. Any last thoughts? Yeah. Uh, 
to be honest i am very optimistic about the gdp i have been uh, tra transportation cost as gdp going coming down from 14 to 8 i am definitely next 5 years we going to see a huge amount of definite definite change happening there both because there is a bottom up top down both approaches are there and we are moving both on processes tools technology and the use case which we are going to see in next couple of next 3 to 5 years is is completely different than what we are looking at the, the, the art of imagination art of possible is right. is is there right and uh, just to give you perspective as an oem we are working on lot of use cases which are which are uh, across the chain not only within the vehicle or linking to asset only so yes i do i do see in next 5 years the changes are going to happen big time ankur any last thoughts so as a saas solution provider so in our case so the fleet owners with whom we are working so they are using the data and they are increasing their fee of vehicle utilization either through the ppms trans right through the tire management of the fuel sensor or the iot sensors but in case of uh, enterprises or the manufacturers we are providing them uh, the solution and configuring the complete uh, uh, integration with either they are using the sap or salesforce and providing them the centralized control dashboard where the different kpis is the, the real time kpis will be there and they are working on that to improve their uh, uh, increasing their efficiency and the compliances thanks a lot so i think we are almost on time so look it's been an interesting discussion i don't think we would have expected to come up with perfect answers where it could have been solved by now but what i'm taking away is you know data is now far more ubiquitous because with telematics and iot and some of the more recent regulatory changes there has been a explosion of data that's available the challenge is really about how do you bring all that data together keeping in mind data privacy as well and make it available to supply chain participants to the point you made it's not just the large people but also the small that's level 1 of the problem the level 2 of the problem is then really how do you build the capability either within participants you can take that data and do something with it and create value for them or somebody does this for the smaller people, right so which is where perhaps platforms such as yours and yours come in right? because you're solving this problem which can help smaller transporters smaller shippers actually solve that problem. that's maybe the second level third level i would think is you also need to drive adoption and ensure that value is delivered so to get the willingness willingness to pay i do believe one thing we have not talked a lot about is the design of the solution itself to make adoption easy but maybe that's a subject for a separate conversation thank you so much it's been a pleasure here being here with all of you i hope you took away some thoughts for the future thank you all the panelists